Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jam Vishnupad Padamaham Sabarajakacharya Asto Tadasata Shishimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Popad Kijai Jayam Vishnupad Paramaham Saparvaja Kacharya Asto Tarasata Shushimad Shringaguru Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Kijai Ananti Kodi Vaishnavinda Kijai Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Kijai Nam Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai Premzukaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivinda Kijai Shishi Radha Krishna Gopi Gopinath Shamakund, Radakund, Giri Govardhan, Kijai. Vrindavan Dam, Kijai. Mayapur Dam, Kijai. Navadvip Dam, Kijai. Jagannath Puri Dam, Kijai. New Dwarka Dam, Kijai. Their Divine Lordship, Shishi Rukmini Dwarkadish, Kijai. Their Divine Lordship, Shishi Jagannath, Baladev, Shimati Subhadra, Kijai. Their Divine Lordship, Shishi Gornitai, Kijai. Shimad Bhagavatam, Kijai. Jimunamai Gangamai Kijai, Tosi Devi Bhakti Devi Kijai, Prashadam Distribution Kijai, Harinam Sankirtan Jagi Kijai, Transcendental Book Distribution Kijai, Gora Pramananda Hare Hare Bo, All Glories to all the Symbol Devotees, Hare Krishna, All Glories to all the Symbol Devotees, Hare Krishna, All Glories to all the Symbol Devotees, Hare Krishna, All Glories, All Glories to Sri Sri Guru and Sri Guranga, Glories to Sri Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the ninth canto. The canto is entitled Liberation. And this is chapter 20, the dynasty of Pu. And we're going to read texts... 28 to 33, I believe. There's like six verses. So I'm going to read these because there's no purports, and I'll stop at one that has a purport. Mrigan chukladata krishnan haranyena parvitan adat karmani masnare niyutani chattur dasa. When Maharaj Bharta performed the sacrifice known as Mashnara, or a sacrifice in the place known as Mashnara. He gave in charity 14 lakhs of excellent elephants with white tusks and black bodies, completely covered with golden ornaments. Bhartasya mahat karma na purve na pare nipaha naiva pur naiva prapshanti Bahu Byam Tridivanyata. As one cannot approach the heavenly planets simply by the strength of his arms, for who can touch the heavenly planets with his hands? One cannot imitate the wonderful activities of Maharaj Bharta. No one could perform such activities in the past, nor will anyone be able to do so in the future. Wow. Text 30. Kirata hunan yavanan 
Pondran Kankan, Kasan Chakan, Abramanya Nipams Chahan, Malechan Dig Vijaya Kilan. When Maharaj Bharta was on tour, he defeated or killed all the Karatas, Hunas, Yavanas, Pondras, Kankas, Kasas, Sakas, and the kings who were opposed to the Vedic principles of Brahminical culture. Jita Purasura Devan Yerasanoksam Yerasokam Si Bejiri Devastriyo Rasam Nitta Prani Pi Punar Arhat. Formerly, after conquering the demigods, all the demons had taken shelter of the lower planetary system known as Rasatala and had brought all the wives and daughters of the demigods there also. Maharaj Bharta, however, rescued all those women along with their associates from the clutches of the demons and he returned them to the demigods. Wow. Sarvan Kaman Dudu Hatu Prajanam Tasha Rodasi Samastri Nava Sahasrir Dikshu Chakram Avartayat Maharaj Bharta provided all necessities for his subjects, both on this earth and in the heavenly planets, for 27,000 years. He circulated his orders and distributed his soldiers in all directions. Okay, text 33. Sa, Samrad, Loka, Palakyam, Sa Samrad, Loka, Palakyam, Aishvaryam, Adirat, Shriyam, Aishvaryam, Adirat, Shriyam, Chakram, Chaskilitam, Pranan, Chakram Chaskalitam Pranan, Miseti, Uparama, Ha, Miseti Uparama, Ha, Sasamra Lokapalakyam, Aisvaryam Ariratriyam, Chakram Chaksalitam Pranam, Miseti Uparamaha, Sasamra Lokapalakyam, Aisvaryam Ariratriyam, Chakram Chas Kalitam Pranam, Miseti Upararamaha, Sasamra Lokapalakyam, Aisvaryam Adirachriyam, Chakram Chas Kalitam Pranam, Miseti Uparamaha, Sasamra Lokapalakam, Sasamra Lokapalakam, Sasamra Lokapalakam, Sasamra Lokapalakam,
missionaries. Maharaj Bharata, Samrat, the Emperor, Lokapala Akyam, known as the ruler of all the Lokas or planets, Aishvaryam, such opulences, Adirat, thoroughly in power. Shriyam, kingdom. Chakram, soldiers or orders. Cha, and Askalitam, without failure. Pranan, life or sons and family. Mrisha, all false. E.T., Thus, Upararama ceased to enjoy. Ha, in the past. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. As the ruler of the entire universe, Emperor Bharat had all the opulences of a great kingdom and unconquerable soldiers. His sons and family had seemed to him to be his entire life. But finally, he thought of all this as an impediment to spiritual advancement, and therefore he ceased from enjoying it. Pur purport. Mahars Bharta had incomparable opulence in sovereignty, soldiers, sons, daughters, and everything for material enjoyment. But when he realized that all such material opulences were useless for spiritual advancement, he retired from material enjoyment. The Vedic civilization enjoins that after a certain age, following in the footsteps of Maharaj Bharat, one should cease to enjoy material opulences and should take the order of Vana Prasta. Jai. Omagyana Timanandasya Gananjana Salakaya. Chaksus unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurve namaha. Shri chitanya manobhistam stapitam yena bhutale. Swayam upagadamayam dadanti swapadanti kam. Jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda. Shri advaita garadha shivasari gaur bhakta vinda. Hare krishna, hare krishna, krishna krishna, hare hare. Hare rama, hare rama, rama rama, hare hare. Vanchakopa tubius cha kripasin dubeva cha. Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha. So, well, we're hearing about a great hero of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Many of us have heard of so called heroes now in this day, great leaders, great genii, you know, geniuses powerful people, but now we're so, it's so, we're so fortunate that we have these heroes kindly appearing on the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada said that it's non-different. He said, Narda Muni, Prahlad Maharaj, Krishna has kindly appeared on these pages of the Bhagavatam. So we simply have to absorb our mind in them. So this is very powerful. These great personalities they have a higher level of thought. And this is what all Srimad Bhagavatam is about, is raising our level, our vibration, our thinking power to the highest level. So they say geniuses are very powerful. They, they can see the bigger picture. They understand things more clearly. We have great doctors that are like geniuses, or some are just specialists. There may be a problem. A person may go into the hospital and he may have 
you know, disastrous situation. He goes in the ICU or the emergency room and they see that every organ in his body has failed practically. Can't breathe, can't think properly. So someone, a specialist of the lungs, he may come in and say, oh, he needs to do this, but not knowing of the other problems. And another one may come and say, oh, it's his kidneys, oh, it's his legs, or it's this. But if it's a proper hospital, then they would have someone that oversees all of these different things and all the different doctors and coordinates and cooperates them properly. And it could just be a simple problem, actually. The guy's ready to die, he's actually dying. All his organs have failed and everything. But yeah, you take a simple blood sample and you have someone that oversees the whole thing and it's simply a case of malaria. And it gives him a powerful medicine and in a few days he's discharged. So this is uh, how we have to see the bigger picture. And this is what the Acharyas, the heroes, they actually see the bigger picture. They have a higher level of thought where we can't see. It's like, you know, you can't see the forest because of the trees. How's that go? Something like that. So the tree, you know, you can't see anything above the trees because you're in the trees. You're below the trees. You can't see what's beyond. So the same way the Acharyas, they see what's beyond the just ordinary and mundane problems of the mature world. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. They see beyond these things. They can see the bigger picture of what's happening in the universe. So, uh, Prabhupada mentions Vanaprastha in this purport. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And he mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, in the fourth chapter, he talks about how in human society, there's four divisions of human life. And he mentions them, the brahmacharis, the grihastas, the vanaprastas, the sannyasis. And he says they're all meant to become perfect yogis or transcendentalists. Since human life is not meant for enjoying sense gratification like the animals. So this is what this great king, Mars Bart, actually realized that this life is not meant for this enjoyment. Even though he had the greatest enjoyment, the greatest power, he was the king of the entire universe. <laughs> you know, nobody's achieved this position, nor ever will there be one in the past or the future. So Prabhupada mentions how after we retire from household life, we have to accept this Vanaprast order. And what happens during that? One has to accept severe penances, like living in the forest or dressing with bark and not shaving. And it goes on and on, so many great austerities that we have to perform. But this is in the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, Prabhupada mentions here, but if one is fortunate enough to understand Bhagavad Gita, especially these middle six chapters in the Association of Devotees, then his life at once becomes glorified beyond all penances, sacrifices, charities, speculations, etc. For one can achieve all the results of these activities simply by Krishna consciousness. So that's what Prabhupada says. The beauty of Krishna consciousness is that simply by one stroke, we, by engaging in devotional service, we can surpass all these rituals, all these austerities of these different orders of life. So this is the simple solution to all the problems given to us by these great acharyas. So Prabhupada also mentions here in the Bhagavad Gita, this is in the eighth chapter, by advancement in the association of the devotee, one is placed in devotional service and this service dispels all his misgivings about anything. He, and then he understands Krishna, his different forms, his features. And then after that's cleared away, then one becomes fixed in one's study. Then one realizes the study of the Bhagavad Gita and attains the state of feeling always Krishna conscious. In the advanced stage, one falls completely in love with Krishna the highest perfectional stage of life enables a devotee to be transferred to Krishna's abode in the spiritual sky, Goloka Vrindavan, where he becomes eternally happy. So this is our whole 
process is such a simple process, but yet we have to actually focus. We have to study very intently. Now there's a nice, uh, another pastime we could see about this great hero of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is in the first canto where Dhritarashtra quits home because of the mercy of a great Acharya, his brother, Vidura. And here, Prabhupada mentions in a very powerful purport, I'm just going to read a few sentences. The living being, by his desiring to lord it over the material world, this is the king, his, who else can overlord the material world as a great king like Mars Bart, over the entire universe, he actually was a control. So, by desiring to lord it over the material world and declining to cooperate with the Supreme Lord, we contact the sum total of the material world, namely the Mahatattva and the form of the Mahatattva, his false identity with the material world, intelligence, mind, senses is developed. This covers his spiritual identity. So not only are we covered by the trees and the mohills that we can't see beyond, but look at saying we're discovered by the entire Mahatattva. <laughs> We're actually buried in this sum total of the material world. So we're completely covered over. And then, he, then Prabhupada, in another sentence in that purport, he says, in other words, we have to realize that qualitatively, one is non-different from the super soul. And thus he transcends the material sky by his pure identical intelligence, and thus becomes engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. This is the highest perfectional development of spiritual identity, which was attained by Dhritarashtra, by the grace of Idura and the Lord. So this is what Dhritarashtra did, is he actually went backwards in his mystic power, like Srila Prabhupada said, that the purpose of all these ashrams is to become a yogi. And this is what Dhritarashtra did. He was, in his yogic ability, he actually reversed the process of getting covered over by this Mahatattva, this material energy. And then he realized he was actually spiritual quality with the super soul. And this is how Srila Prabhupada ends the purport. A pure devotee of the Lord does not live on any planet of the material sky, nor does he feel any contact with material elements. His so-called material body does not exist, being surcharged with the spiritual current of the Lord's identical interest. Isn't that powerful? He is surcharged with the spiritual current of the Lord's identical interest. And thus he is permanently freed from all contaminations of the sum total of the Mahatattva. He is always in the spiritual sky, which he attains by being transcendental to the sevenfold material coverings by the effect of his devotional service. The conditioned souls are within the coverings, whereas the liberated souls is far beyond the cover. So talk about being covered over and talk about getting a bird's eye view or an airplane view. The, spirit, the pure devotee, the great acharyas, they actually don't even live on this planet. <laughs> they don't even live in, the, in, this, in this material world practically. They're not even in touch with these material elements. They're completely transcendental. So who better to take shelter of? Who better to really be your hero? Who else could be a greater genius than this? So if we look at this verse, I was analyzing this verse, and I was seeing how, let's see if we could open this up here. There we go. We could see in Acharya, he actually knows what the problem is. He actually knows the solution to the problem. Just like the great physician, he can he understands what's going on. He sees the whole picture and he could diagnose properly. And these acharyas, they can explain what's happening, what's the nature of this world, just in a f couple words. You know, it's like, w you can Google, what's the nature of the world? What will come up? You know, so many speculations, so many things, probably nobody even knows. What's the nature of the world? But it, from the acharyas, they give us just in two words. We say it every day. Samsara Davana. 
It's like a forest fire. This is the material world, it's a forest fire. And they could have an analytical, penetrating view of what the world is like. And not only that, but they could give you a view of actually who God is, the creator of all this world. And he could reveal that to you. He can give you the problem, the solution to the problem. And this is a amazing purport that was given in uh, text 24 to 26 of this particular canon we just read a few days ago. Prabhupada gives the solution to this whole problem. He gives the problem and he gives a solution in that verse. And he talks about we have to perform jagya. We have to perform the sacrifice. And what is that? It's just a simple thing. It's just simply chanting this kirtan. Just pick up a pair of cartels, pick up a drum, and it's happening just in this one building, but it has an influence in the entire universe, this kirtan. This sankirtan jagya is so powerful that it can actually make a cosmic revolution. It's so powerful. So this is man cooperating with the demigods and cooperating with the controller of the demigods, Krishna. So if we can simply cooperate, just like all the different doctors are cooperating, they're in harmony, they have one goal. So similarly, we're given this message by the acharyas, the great geniuses, the great pure devotees, on what to do. And that's to cooperate with God by performing this jagya. And then if this happens, then all desirable things will happen. And as Prabhupada said in that purport to the verse 24 to 26, he says, everything will be in proper order. All desirable things will happen. So we're given a blueprint, a, a solution to all the problems. And we have to become carriers of this knowledge also. So we have to be, as Prabhupada said, we, we began to study these books very deeply, and then we're convinced, and then we give out and we give this knowledge in a very convincing way. We give people the panacea to everything, the one panacea to all problems. What is it? Just chant Hare Krishna. Please Krishna. What's the problem? We forgot Krishna. What's the solution? Remember Krishna. That's all, as Bhakti Siddhanta says, that's the thing. So, this whole material world is like in a feverish condition. We're all suffering, like the material body, the universal body is in a condition that's suffering. So we have to cure that disease by uh, following this process. Hare Krishna. So if you analyze these verses that we just read today from verses uh, 28 to 33, What did this great king do? He gave in charity. And what is the greatest charity? Is to relieve people of their distress. And this is the same thing Shri Prabhupada did. He was practically greater than the greatest kings of, of, the, of the ancient times that we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam. He relieved people of their problems. He gave the highest benefit. And he gave it to the largest amount of people he wasn't just concerned about himself, but he traveled over the seas and he went around the globe 14 times. And he gave everyone and anyone this knowledge, this charity of helping people from this distress. And then in the next verse, he talks about how he subdued all these kings. He traveled all the universe, this great king, Bart. He subdued the demons. He protected the demigods. You know, he did so many powerful things. And Srila Prabhupada, he traveled the globe, as I mentioned, 14 times. And anybody who came in contact with him who had any opposition to what he's had to teach or had some nonsense philosophy, he would smash them with his weapon, his sword of knowledge. Nobody could defeat Srila Prabhupada. And you see that. It's, there's so many memories, so many tapes, Srila Prabhupada giving lectures to so many different types of people, whether he's a religious personality, whether he's a, a military person, whether he's a, you know, in the political personality, whatever, Srila Prabhupada defeated them all. They even came to him for advice. 
like that policeman in Chicago, crime, why, what to do. And Srila Prabhupada gave the solution. Like a great king, a personality. And then this great king, he rescued, he reclaimed all the wives of the demigods, and he returned them. He made a safe place for them. And that's what Srila Prabhupada did. He created a home in which the entire world can live peacefully. It didn't matter which color, which race, which religion. Prabhupada made it so that everyone can live peacefully, not living according to all these mundane conceptions because someone is different, someone is different color, different race. So Prabhupada came and rescued all the wives, all the husbands, <laughs> all the children, everybody, the people. Just like in the early days, he came to America and he rescued all these youth that were bewildered, that were just fallen, misguided, and he gave them direction. He gave them the solution. And then it also mentions how he provided all the necessities to all his subjects. And this is what Srila Prabhupada did. He gave the process by which all the necessities of life will be given to you. He circulated his books. He distributed the solution all over the world. And it empowered all his disciples to go on and actually conquer. He empowered them to become distributors of this knowledge, carriers of this knowledge. Because he gave them the Srimad Bhagavatam, it taught them how to think on the highest platform and to give this highest form of thinking to everybody. And this is the actual process of the parampara, is that you have that current, as Prabhupada had the current of the spiritual energy this is a transcendental current that's handed down through parampara. And you can get the same result. Simply touch that current, and then we can become empowered. We can go become enlightened and elevated among all these mundane problems of the material world. And Srila Prabhupada did this. It seems like, I mean, this king was a great king, but Srila Prabhupada did this at the age of 70. He practically conquered the world. Alone, <laughs> came alone. And in just a matter of 10 years. It's just, we can't just phantom what he did. And then Sri Prabhupada actually gave us the most final lesson. Just like this king, he retired, he, he decided to give up everything. And Sri Prabhupada also showed us by his exemplary example of his life and the example of his final lesson that he gave. He showed us how to actually die, how to actually give up everything. So this is Srila Prabhupada, he, his example of his personal life, his living, his teaching, his sharing, his protecting, his charity, so many things Srila Prabhupada did. And then ultimately showing us how to actually die and he was a perfect example. And he will go down in time. You know, there's no time when you just go down for eternity, what Srila Prabhupada did. So this is what Prabhupada did. He actually gave us a solution to the ultimate good for the entire universe, for the entire world. One problem was lack of Krishna consciousness, and the one solution was Krishna consciousness. So we have to become in touch with this transcendental current of Srila Prabhupada, and like he did, we have to figure out how to present it in such a way that people will accept it. We have to become so convinced ourselves and then actually try to realize how to convince others, present it in a very convincing way. So this is our dedication. We just simply understand this. We dedicate our life to Krishna. And then he will empower us to actually serve others properly.
So thank you very much. Is there any comments or realizations, questions? Yes, Ananda Kirtan Prabhu. Yes, sure. That's, uh, I think, from the Bhagavad Gita. That's in Bhagavad Gita 828. So after these misgivings have been perfectly cleared away, one becomes fixed in one's study. Then one realizes the study of Bhagavad Gita and attains the state of feeling always Krishna conscious. Then you completely fall in love with Krishna. So that's great, yeah. I saw another hand or something over here. Okay, well thank you for your kind attention. All glories to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm.